A literacy friendly uh, programme is to be just mindful of everything that's involved in literacy for the participants. So that would be maybe using different uh, sorts of materials. So I think if you're using handouts, you have to be very mindful of the fact that there's not too much information and too much jargon, I suppose, uh, within those um, handouts. because you have to be mindful of the literacy aspect. So also, I think not too many handouts as well, because people don't want to just have, have things that they have to read constantly. So I think if you're lucky enough to have the Internet, uh, access to the Internet within the class, I think that's very useful for uh, engaging the participants. And also uh, there's such an array of materials online that you can use. So, for instance, um, the likes of the TED Talks are great because uh, there's something that are visual, but also sometimes they're interactive. So, you know, it depends on what topic you're covering. You can use resources like that. Also, uh, things like quizzes and they don't have to be written quizzes. They can be verbal quizzes. So there's, you know, there's a whole array of resources out there. You just have to be, you know, think about what you're doing. And also you can be as creative as you want to be as well. I think with regard to numeracy, sometimes it's slightly forgotten about. Uh, We think of literacy, but we don't think of the numeracy side of things. So I think particularly with a health and well-being course, there's lots of aspects in health that, you know, require numeracy and for participants to be able, you know, to deal with numeracy. So I think you could look at things like even people taking their medication. That is a numeracy aspect to your health. I think with regard to the health um, side, if you want to look at diet, there's a lot of numeracy involved in diet. It might be something like reading food labels. It might be calculating something like your calorie intake. So again, it would be good to do a little bit of fun work without it being very, you know, numeracy laden. With regards to communication strategies, uh, we found the likes of role play was actually a good way of engaging people. So there was things you could do around a doctor patient kind of role play. And that was important because people do have issues, you know, around how they deal with, you know, service providers and service practitioners within the health settings. So uh, we did uh, an Ask Me Three uh, role play. So it's basically three simple questions. You get them to ask, uh, what is the problem? Uh, What do I need to do about it? And why I need to do that? So it's a good and easy, simple way for people to remember that that's the three questions they ask. Another uh, literacy friendly approach can be the fact that uh, you can't assume as a tutor that everybody in the room understands what you're saying and what you're talking about, uh, especially when it comes to health um, literacy, because the terminology can be just so um, difficult. So it's important to ask people as you go along, do they understand and that encourage them to ask as many questions as they want. I found that there were several different outcomes. Um, They were physical outcomes for the participants. They were dietary outcomes, uh, well-being outcomes and literacy outcomes. So with regard to physical outcomes, um, some participants said that they actually actively took up uh, some physical activity as a result of being on the course. So that was from walking. And I know one participant said they took a pitch and put. So it's great to hear that that's an out- a good outcome for somebody. So with regard to dietary outcome, um, I thought this was really an, an interesting story that one of the participants actually said that they used to have a goodie drawer for their grandchild. And as a result of being on the course, they actually decided to get rid of the goodie drawer and have a fruit bowl. So there was a little bit of um, tear, a few tears from the grandchild at the beginning, but they actually got used to it and it became the norm. So that's great to hear as well. So I think with regard, if you look at the well-being outcomes, um, there's different you know, outcomes regarding that. It can be something as simple as it's the participants time for themselves. They're giving themselves this time to come to the course and they say out of a maybe hectic week, it's their three hours a week for themselves. And I think that's very important for somebody's wealth well-being so also there's the social aspect uh, which is again very important when it comes to well-being so um, just the fact that they're coming out they're getting out of their house and they're meeting new people and they're engaging in something that they seem to really really enjoy and then I think with regard to outcomes there's another one and that would be maybe literacy outcomes Um, not just improved health literacy and maybe understanding a little bit more about how you engage with, you know, practitioners and the health services and maybe understanding a little bit more around those. But also some people found that 
they realised that they actually had literacy difficulties and numeracy difficulties. And as a result of that, then they decided that they'd actually go back to some literacy class or basic English classes. So I thought that was great to hear.